Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta. And today we will discuss latent growth curve model in SPSS X. A latent growth curve model is a statistical technique used in longitudinal data analysis to understand and model the development or change in variable over the time. It is particularly useful when studying repeated measures on the same individuals or entities over multiple time points. LGCM is a type of structural equation model that allows researchers to examine both the average trajectory of change and individual differences in the change process. In simple terms, latent growth curve model helps to uncover the underlying or latent growth pattern that characterizes the change in a variable over the time. This growth pattern is often represented as a curve or a line that fits the data points collected at different time points. So first of all, we will have to see on which data set we can carry out this type of analysis. So here we are having the data set of the patients where we are having patient gender, his or her blood pressure at time period one, time period two and time period three. Similarly, we have also measured the insulin levels, insulin level one, insulin two, insulin three. What we intend to measure is is there any change in the blood pressure? If the change is there, the growth, is it equal or is it different? Similarly, is there any difference in the insulin levels? And is there any change in the growth levels? That also we want to check. So for this, we will go on the canvas of SPSSMs. To activate the growth curve models, the first thing which you have to do is you have to go in the plugins and activate the growth curve model. It will ask you that your time points, please specify your time points or in other words, the observations have been taken at uh, what interval. So we know that the blood pressure was taken at three time interval and insulin was taken at three time interval. Click OK. Done. Now, whenever you work uh, on latent growth curve model, you will require a bigger canvas. So you go in view, interface properties and make sure that you change this thing to landscape legal and you can see that now your canvas is up bigger select all of them or rather uh, press fill size diagram fit to size and with the help of truck bring it on the left side because we will draw another diagram also now deselect all the objects so x1 is a blood pressure at time period one x2 is a blood pressure at time period two x3 is the blood pressure at time period three similarly we will replicate this model for insulin levels also but there are some changes which i have to do on this model now this intercept this intercept and slow represents the growth curve of the individual patients so first of all, we will remove variances from the error term so that the variances of error can be freely estimated. Our assumption is that, that the variances of error are, are not constant over the time. So what you should do, double click on it, go in the parameters and remove the variance from here, done. Similarly, remove the variance from here also. And remove the variances from here. Done. We will also allow mean and variance of intercept and flow and slope to be freely estimated. So you double click here and you remove the mean also from here and the variance also. Similarly, for slope also. We want it to be freely estimated, so remove this. Also, remove the covariances. So, uh, covariances between intercept and slope. We want it to be estimated, so remove it. MS automatically sets the regression weight of the intercept on x1, x2 and x3 
that is it will set it to 111 automatically but we will have to do some changes in case of slow so three uh, different time intervals are there and it has set to 0 0.5 and 1 we will change it to 0 the base 1 and 2 so we want to give the increment of one time interval how we can do this double click on it and now change the regression weight to 1 the idea behind this is it will be easy for the interpretation and that's the reason we are changing it. So the interpretation becomes easy uh, in our output. That's the reason we are changing it. Now we will connect this data set which is there in SPSS, this data set into MS. How I can, how can I do it? I'll click here. I'll go in the file name. I'll activate D drive where my data set is located, which is blood pressure. Press open. So 500 observations are done. Click OK. Now click here. So you can see the list of the variables which are there in our data set. So it's very simple. Click here, blood pressure one. And you can see it has replaced it. Blood pressure two and blood pressure 3. So if you don't want uh, this name to be displayed because it is becoming clumsy, double click on it, go in the text and remove the variable name. So, it, uh, so the model will become clean. Similarly from here also you can do it, variable label and please remove this also, blood pressure 3. So our growth curve model is ready for the patients which includes blood pressure. Now we also want to include the insulin levels. Here we assume that, is that, that there is a linear growth trajectory in the variables. Now we want to make another diagram, the replica of this for the insulin. How we can do it? Please follow the procedure. Select all and activate the photocopier machine from here. Now simply drag it and drop it done but there are some changes which you will have to do see intercept and intercept these two constructs are repeated and when you will run the diagram it will throw the error so we'll have to specify that this intercept is for the blood pressure and this intercept is for the insulin lever this slope is for the blood pressure and this slope is for the insulin lever similarly i will have to change the indicators also so here blood pressure one is there i will replace it with the insulin lever how can i do it very simple i'll click here and list the variables here so now drop insulin levels insulin level at one done insulin at two insulin at three the next thing is double click on it you know the procedure now remove this the things will become simple insulin one Insulin 2, Insulin 3, we will also have to change the intercept, so let's say it's an intercept for uh, blood pressure, this is the slope of blood pressure, let's say this is intercept of insulin we will only write iron and this is the slope of insulin now we will connect the blood pressure intercept with the uh, insulin intercept that we want to see is there any correlation or uh, do they co-vary with each other or not similarly the slope of blood pressure with the slope of insulin so click here one, two, go in plugins, draw covariances, done. Deselect again, single, single uh, finger, slope, slope, and again plugins, draw covariances, done. So now your model is ready.
model is ready, but there is uh, something which you should observe. That is the error terms are getting repeated. This is not allowed. So you go here instead of E1, now write down E4. E2, E2 is repeated. So let's see here it is E5. And here E6. Click on the analysis property. Make sure that the estimate means and intercept are on. And now we will run the model. So it is giving me the warning uh, from where we ca uh, came here. See, you will have to click here. Calculate estimates, proceed with the analysis. And it will ask where you want to save this model. Let's say, let's specify this as latent uh, one, save. And we are ready with the analysis. So we got the message, minimum was achieved, which is quite good. Now go in view text. So first of all, we will see the model fit. The interpretation of the Leiden growth curve model is done in the same conventional structural equation modeling. There is no change. So first of all, we will have to see C minimum by degree of freedom. It is uh, less than five. Yes, it is more than three, but uh, less than five is tolerable. You can see here NFI, RFI, IFI, TLI, CFI, they all are above 0.9, which is quite good. Let's move forward and uh, see the RMSE. It's less than 0.1, which is RMSE is the badness of it, and it is less than 0.1, which is quite good. Now, let's go in the estimates. And we will see the means. So, the means over the time period is 5.118. It that is the average of blood pressure is 5.118. Average of insulin is 4.762. The average slope of the blood pressure. This is the average slope of the blood pressure and this is the average slope of the insulin. This has turned down to be negative. It means that over the time period, the blood pressure change, the change in the blood pressure, I'm talking about the change in time pressure, uh, blood pressure is decreasing. Blood pressure is not decreasing. The change in the blood pressure is decreasing. Here, this slope is positive. It means that the change in the insulin levels over the time period is increasing. I hope the things are clear for you. So, as this is a slope, it is a change in blood pressure. Now, let's talk about this relationship. The intercept of blood pressure with the slope of the blood pressure. It is minus 0 0.206 and the p-value is less than 0 0.05. This means that these covariances are significant. So we can say that those who were having a high blood pressure initially, their change of blood pressure over time is less. I am again repeating. Those who were having a high blood pressure, their change of blood pressure over time is less because this relationship is negative. Now let's talk about this relationship. It is also negative, but here the p-value is more than 0 0.05 and therefore this relationship is not significant. This relationship is not significant, this one. In the previous case, it was significant as the p-value was less than 0 0.05. Now let's talk about the third one, the intercept of blood pressure with the intercept of insulin and this is three stars, which means that this is quite significant. Moreover, it, the estimate is 0.478. So it is a positive relationship. So it clearly means those patients who were having high blood pressure tend to have high insulin levels. Now let's talk about this one. This relationship, slope of the blood pressure with the slope of insulin. P-value less than 0 0.05. This means that, this means that change of uh, So as this number is positive, this estimate is positive, which means that the change of blood pressure is positively correlated with the change in uh, with the change in insulin levels, which means that increase in blood pre pressure and increase in, in insulin levels are simultaneous process. So this was all about latent growth curve model in SPSS MS. For more videos on SPSS MS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.
प्लीज रिफर माई प्ले लिस्ट इन विच आई ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड मेनी वीडियोज ऑन एसपीएस एम एस डोंट फर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड प्रेस द लाइक बटन